there comes a time when the strides for style truly outweigh the sacrifice of substance. And in some cases, that very style is so deliberate and well executed that the style in and of itself becomes the very substance that was thought to be sacrificed to begin with. What's up y'all? It's Ansel and here's why the Tetra has become one of my favorite keyboards of 2022. So right off the bat, I just want to say that this keyboard is stunning. I mean, look at it. It's one of the best looking keyboards that I've ever encountered. But before we do a deep dive into the design and the aesthetics of the Tetra, which I really want to focus on, I'm going to review the sound and the feel of the keyboard first. Well, sound wise, this board is pretty unique. For a 60, it's really, really deep. And at first, I actually thought it sounded almost hollow, but after I daily drove it for a while, I found that it wasn't hollow so much as it had a lot of body and character. And it's very different compared to the trending gasket mount keyboards in the market right now. Yes, it's not as tight or as clean sounding as those other gasket boards, but it still sounds really, really good. It reminds me less of your typical 60 and more of a top mount TKL. While it's not typically my usual preference, it scratches an itch that I didn't realize I even had. Feel-wise, this board is pretty stiff. I mean, at least with the configuration that I have it built in. It's gonna be coming with a palm plate in the base config, which I'm sure will give it a ton of bounce, but for my configuration with the aluminum plate, it's just pretty stiff. But that being said, it doesn't feel harsh at all, just stiff. This isn't a bad thing, again, it's just preference, but just keep this in mind if you want it in the aluminum plate. But of course, again, it comes with a palm plate and I'm sure that would make a world of a difference in terms of sound and feel. So what's interesting is you can actually tune the feel and the sound of this board using its unique dual mounting system. Gion's tadpoles offer a lot in terms of customizability, which I like a lot. I think it adds to another level of like making your board personable. I wanted to try and kind of do like a leaf mount if possible. This isn't technically a leaf spring, I would say. It's kind of like a half gasket. You can also choose how many you want to use. It's completely up to the user. There's just not much of a difference in feel regarding the different configurations. For sound, it's a bit more subtle, but again, this would most likely change with different plates. It can be a soft typing experience with the palm plate, or if you want something a little bit harder, you can definitely use it with aluminum. The experience of building the board is also incredibly easy, and I found myself swapping between mounting systems really, really quickly. Along with the Gion Tadpoles, we are also using the Gionworks feet. When designing Tetra, we both kind of wanted it to be just simple and clean, but also have some flair, which is where all of the CNCing is coming in. Some boards definitely do traditional showing of the screws on the bottom very well. I think it can look good both ways, but for Tetra, where all of our screwing points are, I don't think it would have looked the best. So that is why we ended up opting for the Gion feet. You can just lay them directly over all the screws. There's no adhesive or anything. You can just rip them off, unscrew the board, put them back on. Simple as that. There's also a force brake mod to prevent any kind of ping transfer between the top and the bottom case. And overall, the design and build experience of this board is just so, so nice and seamless. I absolutely love it. So now that we've gone over the sound and the feel and a couple other tidbits, let's go into the design. The most interesting aspect of this board. The one thing that immediately caught my eye is this stunning line that traces the bottom lip and wind keyless blockers of the board. A lot of boards in the past, how I kind of mentioned, they have like little engravings on the blockers. I kind of wanted to do something different. I would make a sketch just on a notepad or whatever, and I was just playing with a bunch of different lines, traced the bottom of the wind keyless blocker. I was like, huh, that's pretty cool. From there, I sent it over to Fat. I was like, yo, is something like this possible? Like, is there going to be tolerance issues or whatnot? And he ended up committing with it, and we ended up implementing that around the rest of the board. The weight on the underside of Tetra is incredible. Lined with an extrusion and engraving, the weight continues the design language of the board's main motifs and themes. The subtle angles on the board's side profiles only further these elements and add an extra bit of flavor to the board's already prominent design intentions. The board isn't seamless, but it doesn't have to be. By being deliberate with its design and being consistent with its themes, the board becomes seamless not in the literal sense, but in the metaphorical and artistic sense. The Tetra base kit sits at about $400 and it comes with an aluminum plate, a palm plate, 
the board and a carrying case. While $400 is nothing to scoff at, I also don't think that the Tetra isn't too far off with its value proposition. I think that this board is well worth it depending on who you are especially when you consider the other boards that are currently on the market and what they're going for. So let's try and figure this out. The board doesn't sound the best, but it does sound really, really good and it's very unique. The board isn't amazingly flexible or bouncy when you have the aluminum plate, but that's preference and it's gonna come with a palm plate. So you can definitely tune that with the palm plate if you really wanted to and the different mounting systems. And I'm pretty sure the palm plate is gonna give you a ton of bounce and flex. So despite the Tetra not being the best in either of those categories, it's definitely up there. Now, to some, for $400, that's not enough. However, once you consider its intentional design and motifs, the seamless build experience that allows for endless experimentation, and sound that stands out from the rest, then this board will begin to win you over, and tenfold that as you continue to daily drive it. And I found that the more that I use the board every single day, I found it less as a peripheral and more as a piece of art and expression. And honestly, that made me enjoy the board so much. And when you think of it that way, style really can create substance. And I think that's what the Tetra really did. And it did it incredibly well. So if that interests you, check out my description below for the group buy. And that's all I got for the video, y'all. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Peace.